So we've just been reading about how Paul really wanted to preach, but the Holy Spirit kept stopping him. He couldn't preach in Asia, couldn't preach in Bithynia. And then he sees a vision, him and Silas, and there's a, a man of Macedonia saying, come over and help us, and immediately they set sail. And they came with a straight course, that means the wind was blowing them straight, the wind was behind them, and they were absolutely on the right course. So, that's how we should be. It might seem that God is saying no sometimes, but in the end our time will come and when we realize we're to do something for God we should get up and do it straight away and he will be with us <clears throat> so they came into Macedonia and they came to Philippi which was a Roman colony and on the Sabbath day we went outside the gate by a river where we saw there was a place of prayer and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there so these women were godly women who had gone out to pray by the river and there was a woman there called Lydia, who sold purple from the city of Thyatira. She worshipped God. So it seems like she was interested in the Jewish religion. She might even have been Jewish. And she listened to us. And her heart was opened by the Lord to pay attention to the things which were spoken by Paul. So God works, and Jesus works on the hearts of people. He opened her heart, opened her mind. Remember how the disciples at the time of the resurrection, Jesus opened their eyes that they could understand the scriptures. And if we are open to God and to Jesus, and we pray to him to understand, he will open our eyes so that we can. And when she was baptized and her household, that means her wider family, maybe her servants and even their children and families. When she was baptized, she urged us, saying, If you've judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and stay. So Paul preached, and it says, And when she was baptized, she asked us to stay. It's sort of taken as assumed that if you listened to the gospel and said, Yes, I believe it, then you were baptized. It sort of happened immediately. We wonder if they did it by the river where she used to like to go down to pray. So she persuaded us and we stayed with her. And as we were going back to the place of prayer, walking from her place down to the river again, that a slave girl met us, who had a spirit by which she predicted the future and who brought her masters much gain by fortune telling. Give me some money and I'll tell you your future. That was the sort of thing it was. And she, this poor girl was mentally disturbed. And she followed after Paul and us and was crying out, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to you the way of salvation. She did this for many days. But Paul, being very disturbed by it, said, I, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And she was healed in that very moment. But when her masters saw that the hope of their gain was gone, they laid hold of Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers and then to the magistrates. And they said, these men being Jews, and people didn't like the Jews, are disturbing our city and teaching customs which it's not lawful for us to receive because we're Romans. And the crowd rose up together against them. I can imagine Lydia shouting out, no, no, leave them alone. But the crowd rose against them, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. <clears throat> and when they'd laid many stripes upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to guard them carefully. And having received this order, he put them into the inner prison, that was probably underground in a cellar, and he fastened their feet in shackles. But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners was listening to them. Now isn't that amazing that in the face of so much persecution and physical pain from having been whipped, beaten, and then have your legs <clears throat> put in iron so you can't move in the dark, to then pray to God and to sing out loud. And to pray to God out, out loud. Now we're often a bit shy about praying in front of other people, but they were in prison and they prayed openly. 
and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds, these iron shackles that they were kept in, were unfastened. And the jailer, being roused out of sleep, seeing the prison doors open, pulled out his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing the prisoners had escaped. Because in those days, <clears throat> if you were a prison keeper and you let your uh, the people you were looking after run away, then you had to die. And he wanted to just kill himself and get it over and done with. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Don't harm yourself, we're all here. He called for lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your family. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him, and to all that word in his household. And as we said about Lydia, that could have been their slaves, their, the relatives of their slaves, their own relatives, like the wider family. And at that same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds that he'd probably given them by beating them. And immediately he and all his family were baptised. So it's beautiful. He washes Paul and Silas, and they, as it were, wash him by baptising him. And he was baptised in the middle of the night. Well, there was lots of things he could have been worried about, like fixing up the prison, counting all the prisoners, making sure that the prison was not going to be left wide open. But the only thing that mattered for him was to be baptised. So he did it immediately, and that is a big theme as we read the New Testament, that people were baptised immediately. They saw that, as Jesus said, he who believes and is baptised will be saved. And so they followed immediately and were baptised straight away. They did not delay it at all for any reason. So he brought them into his house, put food in front of them, and rejoiced greatly with all his family, having believed in God. But when it was day, the magistrates sent their officers, saying, Let those men go. And the jailer told Paul, saying, The magistrates have sent word to let you go, so come and go in peace. And Paul said to them, They've beaten us publicly, uncondemned men that are Roman citizens, and have thrown us into prison, and now they want to throw us out secretly? No, let them come themselves and bring us out. And the officers reported these words to the magistrates, and they feared when they heard that they were Romans. So they came and pleaded with them. And when they brought them out, they asked them to go away from the city, and they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia. And when they'd seen the believers, they comforted them and departed. Well, there was Paul, probably with teeth missing and with his back in an awful state from having been whipped like that with all those stripes and having been then pushed into these very hard iron shackles. And yet he comforts the others when he probably could have done with being comforted himself. And he departed. And we're going to read that he goes on and on and on in preaching the gospel. He refuses to be discouraged. <clears throat> 